hat das Volk auf der ganzen Linie gesiegt. Ohne Erlösung ist geschehen. Das Alte und Morsche, die Monarchie ist zusammengebrochen. Es lebe das Neue, es lebe die Republik. Hallo, mein Name ist Daniel Bill. I'm the director of the game Demiurgos, the Path of the Leviathan. We call it a history-driven open-world RPG adventure. In this video, I just want to give you a short overview of what you can expect from the game. If intrigued and interested, I recommend visiting our website for further details and background information. Please keep in mind that we are showing you a pre-alpha version of the game, so be aware that there might be placeholders, graphical glitches and unfinished mechanics. The world you see could be described as a parallel universe, depicted as historical, antique Greece, but set in the time frame of the late Industrial Revolution. In this game you don't wake up as a nameless and weak hero. You assume the role of Akos Polychrom, first commissioner of Messenia, agitator of the state of Lacedaemon, the powerful incarnation of Spartan hegemony over the Peloponnese. As a powerful individual, you step into an unstable world, and it is your destiny to fight for what you assume is true order. Like in most adventure games, the player can interact with the world via the mouse cursor. Instead of creating a boundless, insanely large world, we decided to split it up into many single but nonetheless large areas, with dense interactivity and points of interest. As you roam this continuously opening world, you will meet many different societies with different values, laws and structures. Here in Messenia, Akos Polychron plays an essential part in Sparta's oppression of the Helots, state-owned slaves in service of the community. You may have noticed that those two workers stopped talking when Akos came close. Maybe they are hiding something. False alarm. Of course, this is just an early peek of what the interactions in the final game will look like, and later in this preview, we will show you more. The world you enter is full of historical and cultural references. Whilst a representation of these references in the game might be obliterated at first, the premise behind every aspect of the game's story has a connection to modern era and ancient events or core principles of human society and politics. While the Helots fear Akos, the Spartans respect him, since he's known to them for a zealous fervor and great virtue. You decide which path the story takes. The game offers you further mechanics and illustrations that keep you aware of the world's current situation and your own situation at all times and enable you to interact with it. This is the main menu. The colored icons on the right side represent static mechanics like maps, your inventory or your skills. The icons on the left side represent interactive items you currently have in your inventory, for example a camera, a compass or a light. There also is a sub-menu containing more general information, like your current quest or the important factions and ideologies tab. In this tab you most significantly see the circle of ideology on the right, representing an ideological view with the axis collectivism, individualism and pluralism totalitarism. On the left you see the second layer of relation, representing fear and love. The player can compare his character's view with those of individuals and with those of factions. Those two groups of variables will play an important part throughout the whole game and will appear repeatedly in other forms of interaction. You are also able to check your current relation status and the ideological view of the three main factions, Sparta, Athenae and Persia. Late industrialization was deeply connected with massive changes in political reality. The larger dots at the top of the triangles represent the ruling movement of power, while the smaller dots on the other corners represent the opposing powers inside the factions. For Sparta, the seemingly most dangerous enemy to the ruling authoritarian and collectivistic Spartan elite is the revolutionary Sparta Cos League, fighting for a pluralistic system and equality for the Helots. At the start of the game, Akos Polychron, as a higher Spartan official and subjected to the governor of Messenia, is confronted with a wave of attacks by Spartacus League guerrilla forces and also with agitators amidst the oppressed Helots themselves. As the backbone of the Spartan working forces, these people live under precarious circumstances, mostly in militarily structured camps. 
the most effective decisions you have to make might not be the most moral ones, of course always depending on the player's character's point of view. While the Spartacus League apparently is growing in strength every day, Spartacus himself was said to be spotted close to the city of Sparta. As the story unfolds, it is up to you to intensify the efforts in hunting him down or to begin to call in question the system you are struggling for. Nearly every decision you make will change your protagonist's position on the circle of ideology and therefore shape the events and decisions you face in the future, sometimes to a great extent. The second form in which the player's decision-making influences the game is through decisions in a linear path of developments. The Spartan Senate, for example, the Gerugia, is split into a progressive and a reactionary group. Those groups might have different interests, quests might have different results according to your approach or how successful you've been. At certain points in the game, the player will have to make definite decisions, not only altering the character's point of view, but also changing the path of history itself. All these paths lead to nine various and three distinctively different endings of the main storyline. However, the threat by the uprising Helos is not the main danger the Spartan state has to face. At the same time, the Persian Empire is on the rise again after the disorder of a succession crisis following the Great King. The Ionic cities in Asia Minor, sensing their chance for independence, are revolting against the new emperor Darius I. With them, they drag all of Hellas into a murderous conflict against the peoples of Asia, instigating what until today are called the Persian Wars. All these surrounding circumstances and the need to unify the Hellenes against the Persian threat lead Akos in the second part of the game to Atenae, the City of Lights. This metropolis of Hellas is the only location that is split into multiple areas. From the harbor Piraeus to the city itself with many famous landmarks like the Acropolis, the Tower of Winds or the famous Academy. Here in Atenae, Akos encounters a totally different social and economic system for the first time. He might be impressed by the general wealth he faces, contrasting his motherland. Sparta by far has the largest industrial capacity in all of Hellas and literally dominates all of its neighbors. But poetry, literature, art in general prospers in this enlightened city just as much as science and cultural values. But even the city of light has some dark places. Here you can see Akos Lighter in action, flaming the leaked gas. The uprising hot air lets the wheel spin and opens a new path. Is this enough to get on the game? A 
Atenae's catacombs not only provide a safe haven for rats and the so-called mole people, but also enable Akos to move rapidly and undetected throughout the city. The entire game spans a time period of three Attic months, Metagatnion, Bodromion, Pyrnapsion, corresponding to August, September and October. While the first part of the game takes place in Sparta's sphere of influence, the second is mainly set in and around Athenae. In the third month, the game world opens entirely and the player is able to travel through large parts of the Antic Mediterranean and Persia. Within every month, Numerous distinct events occur and decisions have to be made that greatly affect the course of the main story, especially the many quests that can be employed by the player to influence and eventually shape the world according to his ideals. Here, Akos is on a mission for the radical socialistic mole people to find a missing person who has possibly been abducted by organized crime to put pressure on the unions associated with the extremists. Unfortunately, Akos does not have 20 coins. Of course, the guy wants gold coins, not the worthless metal used in socialistic Sparta. Luckily, his client, a well-recognized, respected and diplomatic politician, has provided Akos with a document that might help. Every item in the game can be utilized by Akos in a dialogue or conversation. This equipping prevents a player from making decisions accidentally or by trial and error. It is our aspiration that each situation and especially every quest is solvable in different ways and offers different outcomes apart from secondary tasks. Depending on your knowledge, the clues you have found, your upgraded and collected items, as well as the ideological position of your character, an obstacle can be overcome in varying ways or an event's outcome may be changed. In this case, Akos will try to bypass the thugs undetected, as to not jeopardize the life of the hostage. The back entrance seems to be the best option for that. Should Akos be discovered, the mission has not yet failed. Not until the protagonist dies does the game end. In this case, the life of the hostage would probably be lost and Akos would be entangled in combat.
During the adventure, the player can encounter several documents, letters, books or newspapers and read them, sometimes to learn more about the game world, sometimes to find clues regarding specific mission goals. Considering Akko's situation, taking the newspaper is morally neutral, while stealing the wine is clearly selfish. Consequently, even a considerable number of small, seemingly unimportant actions can change the direction and the ideologic position of the player on the circle of ideology. Sometimes violence is the last alternative in a sequence of decisions. In the round-based battle system, each player has action points that are added in each round. These action points can be used for movement or the use of game cards. The player starts out with three randomly chosen cards out of his deck. Which cards his deck contains depends on the equipment of the player and the social decisions in the past. If, for example, Akos had spared a group of defeated enemies during his last brawl with organized crime, he could profit from a card now that possibly would appease the enemy. So, a protagonist talented in handling interventions could prevent a fight in last minute. A graphic on the bottom of the screen, divided into love on the left and fear on the right side, visualizes these circumstances. In this case, the player does not have that option. However, his action points are not sufficient for him to get into a shooting position and be able to fire in this round. That is why Akos moves into a secure position first. Even though the enemy is now protected by the table, the chance that this will not save him is as high as 60%. That's all folks, this was our preview of the game Demiurgos Path of the Leviathan. We sure hope we were able to intrigue and enthuse you with what we have accomplished so far. Now with nearly all the mechanics developed and established, we want to begin with the actual production of the storyline. The extent of side quests and areas for the most part depend on the outcome of the Kickstarter campaign, so of course we are anxious to know if we can captivate enough people. You all could really help us extend our reach by sharing this project on social media and with friends or colleagues that you think might be interested. As a last point, let me once again mention our Vote the Truth concept that allows interaction of the game with present reality open to every backer above the opportunist level. More information can be found in the campaign description. Thank you for your interest and your patience. Atonai, the racist giant of Hellas, epitome of our enlightened, brave new world. The feudal orders our grandparents still experienced have almost vanished. They've been replaced by new ways of thinking, differing amidst people and between borders. Orders that can be crossed by agitators and people that can perish. Sometimes the death of only one can lead to a change in the course of history. Sparta and Atenae struggle for hegemony in the disunited Samachia. Some prophecies already herald the final battle between the powers of the world. Persia claims Asia and the barbarian races as belonging to them. Europe and the Hellenic race, however, they consider separate. So now the time has come, the Persians conclude. 
and their feud with the Hellenes originates with the unrightful taking of Ilion. The Leviathans have chosen their powers. One small spark is enough to rage total war and the death of millions. Out of all of men's miseries, the most bitter is this. To know so much and to have control over nothing. Demiurgos. Path of the Leviathan. <laughs>